And my Christian family members think that people are playing God through life-saving ex and extension technologies. Uh, what could this person say to their uh, family members or relatives why uh, life-saving and life extension technologies are not wrong? So just kind of a practical, what can you say? You know, how can you bring up that subject with your you know, parents, your relatives, your family? Um, I mean, uh, that is kind of gets back to the first question of how uh, many traditional Christians uh, view it as, you know, it's something wrong. It's playing God, uh, trying to save lives. Uh, you know, I guess, uh, and then you get to, into that argument once again where, you know, hey, do they go to a hospital? Well, sure they do. So you would think right. that eventually, you know, more advanced therapies would also be accepted. But, you know, I know many people, many members of the Immortality Institute do encounter that. They grew up with religious traditions and their religious uh, relatives and family members. Uh, they just can't bring the subject up without uh, many, you know, without uh, getting scorned <laughs> upon. Even though it seems like a very loving thing to do, a very Christian thing to do, to alleviate suffering uh, and to cure disease. Uh, could you once again uh, uh, speak to that topic? Well, I think that in our conversation and in your your comments that you've just made are the elements of the, the kind of the, the content of what could be said in terms of you know relieving relieving suffering, more time to do good, do God's will, how whatever. I think the only additional thing I can offer other than those obvious broad kind of yeah said or which are reasonable things um, other reason doesn't always it's not always sufficient um, the only thing I can offer is that is that any when we're and this is not just talking to religious people but when we're talking to anybody who disagrees with us we need to listen Maybe the therapist. I mean, it's coming out now, but we, we need to <laughs> listen, listen yes. carefully to what they say. And when you're listening, when you're listening to a religious person, you want to listen and try to understand their language and what they are saying. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting be devious here, but you want to attempt to speak into their language or, or as much as possible, use their yeah, I, I I know where you're going. Operate into that world, I think you'll get and and a, a big a, a, you know longer distance down the road than if you if it becomes a confrontive sort of thing. I'm not sure I can add anything else. Yeah, that. that's the and the one thing I said earlier is maybe uh, you did, uh, do the what would Jesus do uh, uh, scenario. You know, of course yeah. he's going to heal people. He's going to alleviate suffering. You know, obviously that would be a very uh, Christian thing to do, a very loving and compassionate thing to do if you can uh, right. cure disease, you know, and help people live yeah. longer and enjoy their life. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I can't, I, I would say that is a, a very uh, way, good way to maybe uh, broach the conversation between, especially for very tr re traditional uh, religious also, people, I would say. And you could also make it very concrete. I mean, uh, most anyone is talking to most anyone. Uh, they're they're going to have someone in their family or someone they know with uh, Alzheimer's or cancer or some issue, and mm -hmm. you know they can say, "Look, what if a therapy comes out that would cure you know, Alzheimer's? Help uh, Aunt Emma, whatever." Yeah. Then that makes it very concrete, and and that's why I think that when at when when the day is done, um, many. Uh, conservative Christians are going to find a way to theologically justify this when they see what's really at stake, which is the opportunity to live a longer, healthier life for them and their family. Sure. Okay, uh, I have another question here. I don't know if uh, any other viewers out there have any questions at this point, but I do have one yet uh, to ask you. Um, you talk about you now the more liberal branches of Christianity. Would you agree that if one takes this liberal theology to its ultimate conclusion, this would call for removing all fetters of uh, m mortality and disease, all obstacles, uh, I mean, uh, to life extension. Uh, I would think the answer to me would be yes, that uh, 
people who uh, aren't bound to you know the very traditional uh, uh, aren't you know bound to the very traditional you know Bible interpretation of life you know and uh, afterlife. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, the person who asked the question, oh, liberation theology. Uh, I, I got to ask this again. Would you agree that if one takes liberation theology to its ultimate conclusion, that this would call for the removing of all uh, fetters of mortality and disease? I certainly can see how that uh, it could play out that way. But again, I would remind of something that we we discussed earlier in the hour, and that is the justice issue and at the heart of liberation theology, which started in Latin America, it basically had to do with addressing poverty and then black theology with racism and feminist theology with sexism. It all has to do with equality. So at the heart of the liberation theology movement in Christianity is equality and so going forward certainly you could say well now you know we want to liberate the species so to speak uh, you know from the shackles of the body or whatever yeah and by the way there are all kinds of conversations we could have about that that we haven't even touched on in terms <laughs> of the different different brands of, of transhumanism and how it would relate to different liberation of, it, I mean there, there can be objections to that I haven't talked about, but to go back to this one that's on the floor right now is that to liberate uh, the liberation advocates, if you want to say it that way, are not going to support this unless they can be convinced that it's going to uh, liberate all human beings. All, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. That's, that's right. Yeah, the uh, social equality concern. So they would be for uh, liberation, uh, you know, technologies uh, in in principle, but they would also have to would like to see socially uh, would like to see the equality angle as well. Right. Okay. Now there are other questions as well. When you get to some versions of transhumanism, uh, mind uploading and so on, where you are. Um, suppressing or eliminating the need for the physical body, uh, then that's going to raise some different kind of questions from the theologian types who are going to start talking about dualism and their opposition to that and so on. So there's going there, there's other issues. I'm not suggesting the only one is the social inequality. Okay. Yeah, many different issues. I guess uh, a couple of things. I big conversation that we have to unfold. Oh, right yeah. I, I, that, 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 you know, over a period of years. Yes. I mean, I mean, the future, the, the the sphere of possibilities with life extension and transhumanism is so huge uh, that it is. Exactly. I mean, it demands a, a ongoing and large conversation involving many people. Uh, just a couple of personal questions here uh, before we uh, come to a conclusion. Now, I mean, obviously you're studying uh, and uh, you know trying to branch uh, religion with um, uh, transhumanism, cryonics, stuff like that. I, uh, are I mean, would you consider yourself also an extreme life extensionist? Are you signed up for cryonics, or have you considered it uh, from a personal personal perspective? There. Um, well. My main agenda is yeah. to move forward the conversation yes. in a way that we have people, we have a thoughtful conversation about this. And I, as you can probably tell from my comments, I'm much more partial to a more progressive religious kind of thinking on yeah. this. Uh, I, I'll just go ahead and say it. I, I would, whoever determines how these programs unfold and how they're made available, I would prefer it, it, it be people who are bringing a thoughtful and, and rational approach to it, right? Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, in terms of my own view of this, uh, I, I am still trying to sort out some of my own positions. I have not solidified all of them. Okay. Uh, I